to the show. Today is day two of our meal plan week. All this week, I've taken the stress out of not only what to cook, but also the stress of planning a grocery shop, which I know can be a big stress. I wrote up a grocery list with everything that you need for a week's worth of eats and posted that up on our social media platforms. So if you haven't already, go grab that and get shopping because we have got some cooking to do. Now, today we are making, it is Tuesday. Ooh, very exciting. This is where I feel like a, a news anchor. We are making my cheddar jalapeno soda bread. I am very excited about this. Listen, I feel like sometimes, yes, this is a Tuesday recipe. Oh, there she goes. There we go. This is a Tuesday recipe. Um, so you're like, Mary, why are you asking me to make bread? <laughs> That's not a Tuesday thing. But soda bread is. It's not a yeast risen bread. It is baking soda and baking powder risen. So it's really quick. It's almost like a giant scone, kind of. Really, really tasty. Super great for breakfast, lunches, dinners. This is something to pair with if you've got some leaves hanging out, make a little salad, maybe some soup. For dinner tonight, it's going to be delicious. So to get started, we, get to, we need to get to work on the dry ingredients. So the first thing I need is four cups of flour. I'm using all-purpose flour, but honestly at home, I often like to cut this with a little bit of whole wheat. Typically, I'll do half and half, because if you do all whole wheat, it tends to be a little bit too heavy, and it doesn't rise up as, not, uh, as much. So go in with uh, th two cups of all-purpose and then two cups of whatever you want. I'm just going in with more all-purpose. You need four cups total. As I said before, we're really talking about measurements today. It's baking. All right. Now, I really like with this loaf all purpose because we are making this a cheddar jalapeno soda bread. So I really want those flavors to shine. But for a little bit of added kind of nutrients and deliciousness, I'm also going in with half a cup of rolled oats. Now, if all you have are like quick cooking oats, feel free to use those. But this just gives you a little bit of whole grain in there, makes you feel a little bit better, which is always a good thing. Now, for those leavening agents, we need to add in those chemical leaveners. Traditional bread, like that pillowy, delicious bread that we usually use for sandwiches, uses yeast to give it that, that rise. But we don't want to use yeast. It takes too long. So what we're using is those chemical leaveners. So those are like baking soda and baking powder. Now, despite this being called soda bread, it uses more baking powder than you'd think. It uses a full tablespoon of baking powder, which if you bake, that's a lot of baking powder. Um, but it's going to give it such a beautiful lift. It's really, really really nice, really tasty. And when that hits the heat of the oven, that baking powder reacts and gives you that lift and loftiness that you're looking for. Now for the baking soda, we're only going in with a teaspoon of that. That's going to react with the acidity of the wet ingredients and give you that initial like, pff, which is what you're looking for as well. So we're kind of getting that double situation. Now to season that up, I'm going in with about three quarters ish of a teaspoon of kosher salt. So I like kosher salt. If you're using sea salt, I'd probably do about a half a teaspoon because it tends to be a little bit saltier tasting. But kosher salt is what I typically use, so that's what's going in. Now, I'm just going to give this a good stir together. And then I want to add in my cheese. Now, I am using about 200 grams of grated orange cheddar cheese because I like the way it looks. You can see it, which in my mind makes it taste cheesier. Does that make sense to anybody else or is that just, okay. If you were to use white cheddar, it would be fancier, but you can't see it. So it feels like it tastes less cheesy. But if you wanted to, you could add in feta cheese here as well. That would be really, really nice. But again, I like that kind of cheddar jalapeno situation. So I've got 200 grams here that I've grated up. I want to reserve some of that back though, because I'm going to scatter it on the top. So I'm going to go in with a good amount of that cheese. Yeah, guys. We're not messing around. It's Tuesday. We're making bread. You got to have a lot of cheese in there. All right. Give that a good toss together just to coat that cheese and get it evenly combined. And now I'm going to get to work on the wet ingredients. So again, unlike making regular bread where you need to have like warm water to activate that yeast, we're just going in with cold from the fridge, everything easy breezy. So the first thing we need is some milk. I'm using buttermilk. One and three quarters ish of a cup is perfect. But if you wanted to, if you only had regular milk on hand or that's what you bought, that's totally cool as well. What you'd want to do, though, is acidify it. So to acidify, mm, are we there? Where are we? Well, we're almost there. That's how we measure at home. That was uh, my acrobats for the day. That was my, <laughs> my squat for the day. All right. Now, if you were using regular milk, you'd want to make it a little bit more acidic so it reacts with those chemical leaveners in the dry ingredients. So you'd want to add in a teaspoon and a half-ish of either lemon juice or white wine vinegar, white vinegar, any sort of light-flavored vinegar works really, really well. That's a good hack to kind of make your own buttermilk. A little bit thinner, but it's going to do the same thing and give you that lift, so that's perfect. Now, into there, I'm also going in with two tablespoons of melted butter for a little bit of richness. 
Yeah, guys, we're going for it. It's gonna be delish. And then I also am going in with two tablespoons of sugar. That's just gonna help with a little bit of browning and just kind of counteract all the savoriness going on in here. If you don't have sugar on hand or maybe you're just not someone who likes to eat sugar, two tablespoons of honey would be great. Even two tablespoons of uh, some uh, maple syrup would be really, really tasty in here as well. So just go on into the wet ingredients with that. Gonna give that a little mix up. And now for those jalapenos, I'm actually gonna mix them into the liquid ingredients. So I'm gonna set these guys aside. And I've got about 250 milliliters, that's about a cup of pickled jalapeno slices. If you're some, yeah. We're getting double flavor. We're getting that acidity from there as well. If you are someone who doesn't love um, spicy things, pickled jalapenos aren't typically that spicy. The pickling process kind of pulls that away. So it's not overly hot, but you could totally sub this out with green onions, something like that. So I'm just gonna transfer those jalapenos. We're going big, there's a lot of jalapenos. <laughs> Guys, it's gonna cook out, it's gonna be delish. Now, if you want, you could do them whole, but that's wild. There's a lady in the audience who is gobsmacked right now. <laughs> That was the best ever, just like. <laughs> so we're going big, as we should. Now I'm gonna chop these up. If you are nervous of jalapenos, pickled jalapenos as well, if you avoid the ones that have this big kind of pit in them with those seeds, those will be less spicy, but I like spice, so we're going big. So I'm just gonna give that a nice chop up. Looking beautiful. And then I'm actually gonna go into those liquid ingredients with those jalapenos. If you don't wanna do the jalapeno flavor, you could totally leave that out, it will be fine. But I am going big. Guys, I'm amped. This is gonna be like savory. This honestly with like a bowl of chili, oh my gosh, would be so, so good. All right, I'm gonna give that a little bit of a whisk. And now I am going to go into those dry ingredients with all of this wet. You just make a little bit of a well right in the center and just dump that right on in. That buttermilk is gonna react with those chemical leaveners, giving you a beautiful lift. I'm starting with a wooden spoon and you just wanna stir this until it forms kind of a shaggy dough. This doesn't turn into like a kneading dough, so it's not something that's tricky to make. You just want it to kind of hold together and have most of that flour gone. So give it a good stir. This is where you get a little elbow grease in. This is the only tricky part of this recipe. Just a little bit, it starts to get a little bit tough, but you're just looking to get most of that flour incorporated. If it starts to look a little dry around the bowl, feel free to get a little bit more milk, a little bit more buttermilk, and just pour it around the edge, just to kind of moisten up that flour. Ugh. This is a big loaf. <laughs> Listen, I'm getting you ready for the week. We're not, uh, we're not messing around here. All right, so that's looking perfect. I'm gonna switch to a spatula. Now I'm just gonna scrape that off. And to shape this loaf, unlike others where you have to knead them and fold them and do all that stuff, all I'm gonna do is put a little bit of flour down and just turn all of this right out onto my work surface. As you can see, we've still got a little bit of that flour in there. We're gonna give this a little bit of a knead just to bring it together. But basically you just wanna push it into a nice kind of round-ish loaf shape. If it looks like a dog's breakfast, honestly, it's still gonna bake up absolutely beautifully. <laughs> you just want it to hold together. Honestly, that looks perfect to me. Little shaggy, still looks good. So what I'm gonna do now is just transfer this onto a parchment lined baking sheet just as is. And then since this is such a dense loaf, what you need to do, this is the one thing you absolutely have to do, get a knife and cut a really deep X almost all the way through. That's gonna help this balloon out and it's gonna help all that heat get into the center of that loaf. Scatter the top with obviously some more cheese just for fun. <laughs> And then this loaf needs to go into a 425 degree oven for about 20 minutes. Then you drop that temperature to four, uh, 325 and let that go for another 20 to 25 minutes and you end up with something that looks like this. Look at that beautiful loaf. I am thrilled to the gills about that. We have obviously got to take a little bite so I'm gonna just cut the little slice off. You can cut it however you'd like. It's delicious with butter. It's amazing on the side of a soup. It is absolutely stunning. Here, I'll transfer it over here so you can see the inside too. Take a little gander at that. That cheese. This with a little bit of butter on there, maybe a little bit of salt, and you are in for a treat. I'm gonna take a bite, okay. Mm. Not too spicy, ooh, that's good. 
That is some delicious bread. I hope you make this tonight and join me. Let me know if you do and if you like it. Tomorrow is day three of meal plan week, so get ready to get cooking. And again, if you don't have that grocery list yet, just go to our social media channels. It's all up there. We're going to take a break, but we'll be right back. Hey, Mary here. What did you think? Drop your comments below and don't forget to like and subscribe for more of the good stuff.